In this video, I'm going to be explaining you all the ray diagrams of convex mirror and also the rules that you have to follow while drawing convex mirror ray diagrams and I'm starting right now. Hey, this is Adwait. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and want to learn how to build your memory, build your brain by uncovering fascinating facts and clear academic concepts. Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so that you don't miss anything. Again, we are going to be doing this on the big whiteboard which we have here but before I go on, I'd like to tell you that we, I have already made two sessions, one on the spherical mirror and its components and also the concave mirror ray diagrams. I would like you to watch the whole first session and the first part of the second session where I explain the rules of while preparing ray diagrams in detail. I will link those videos in the cards right here. Both the videos, you can check that out first and come over here so that you will find it easy to comprehend. Now let's jump over to the big whiteboard. So all the four rules of the ray diagrams uh, which you need to remember, which I explained in the second session. Uh, what was the first rule there? All the light rays parallel to the principal axis will pass through the focus. That was in the case of a concave mirror. Now in a convex mirror, what happens? Obviously, this will be parallel, but it will reflect this way. You know why. This is not this will not meet anywhere. If you produce another ray also, this will not meet anywhere. There is no focus here. And we already know convex mirror has a virtual focus. So if we extend it backward, we can see that the reflected rays when extended backward meet at the focus. They don't really meet, but they virtually meet only when we extend it behind the mirror. So rule number one can be restated as all the light rays parallel to the principal axis will appear to pass through the focus behind the mirror in case of a convex mirror. That was rule number one. Rule number two was opposite of rule number one. All the light rays passing through the focus will get reflected in a parallel direction to the principal axis. Now we can't obviously draw a light ray passing through the focus. But if this light ray when extended backward meets at the focus, then this will get reflected in a parallel direction to the principal axis. This was rule number two. Now we can restate it for the convex mirror as all the light rays going towards the focus will get reflected parallel to the principal axis. That was rule number two. Now we will discuss rule number three as well as rule number four. Now for the rule number three and four, what was rule number three? All the light rays passing through the center of curvature will retrace the same path backward. So now we can't again obviously draw a light ray passing through the center of curvature because center of curvature is behind the a convex mirror. No light rays can pass behind the convex mirror. So if we draw a light ray and if we extend this, if this meets at center of curvature, then it will retrace the same path backward. So rule number three for convex mirror can be restated as all the light rays, all the incident rays which goes towards the center of curvature will retrace the same path backward after reflection. So this was rule number three. And again, if you want the full explanation of all the rules, even in, in a little more detail, I would like you to watch the second session. Now for rule number four, which was the all the incident rays incident on the pole will get reflected, making the same angle with the principal axis. That means principal axis in this case will act as a normal. That's what indirectly the rule says. And it doesn't matter whether it is a concave mirror or a convex mirror, this rule applies for everything and this happens really. There's nothing virtual. If it is incident over here, it will get reflected where this angle and this angle will be same. This will be angle I, this will be angle R and this will become our normal. This was rule number 4. Now we understood all the rules in terms of convex mirror. Now the best part of convex mirror ray diagrams is that there are only two ray diagrams. Because there is all the things are behind the mirror, so there is no specific points where we can keep it. There is only one thing at infinity and then anywhere between infinity and pole in front of the mirror. Now we will jump on to the ray diagrams. Now for the ray diagram 1 of convex mirror which emerges when the object is kept at infinity. Again I told you infinity means any farthest point. So if we keep the object at infinity, I told you that there was one assumption that we had to make. that. All the light rays coming from the object kept at infinity will be parallel to the principal axis. This was one assumption. But if you don't want to assume, don't assume that. And today I'll be showing you when you 
you are not assuming it, what will happen? Okay. So if we assume first that the light rays are parallel to the principal axis, so if the light rays are parallel to the principal axis, then the it will get reflected this way. And same goes from bottom and it will get diverged. That's why this is a diverging mirror, you know that. So if we now extend it backward, this meets at the focus. So wherever the reflected rays meet, there only the image is formed. So the image will be formed this way. So how is the image now? I told you there were three points. So now first, this is at focus, which is behind the mirror. Two, this is point sized or HD, highly diminished. The third thing is that it is virtual and erect. So according to ray diagram one, when the object is kept at infinity, sorry, when the object is kept at infinity, then all the light rays will meet on the focus. So the image is formed at focus. It is highly diminished and virtual and erect. Now we will see if we do not assume that the rays are not parallel. This assumption can work with the concave mirrors as well. You can try it out if you want. Now I will show you how to do that. Now without assuming that the rays are parallel to the principal axis, how can we draw? Let's say some random ray. We draw a normal from the center of curvature. Do somewhat like this. This is angle I, angle R, and then you can draw this this way. This was number one. This is number one. Now we'll take the pole one. This is not parallel yet. So it will make the same angle as the principal axis. Now if we extend this backward. This will meet, uh, this will come this way. This will meet somewhere around here. So this is almost near the focus. That's why we take it at focus. If we draw it perfectly, this will meet at focus. Again, this is at F. Again, this is highly diminished because see, the distance between the intersection point and the principal axis is very small. So this is highly diminished. And then again, virtual and erect because this is meeting above the principal axis, so obviously the image will form this way. Okay, so if you do not assume that it is parallel, this is how the ray diagrams will be formed. If you assume that it is a parallel ray, then it will be really easy for you to draw. If you, if you do not assume, then it will take some time to draw. That is why I would prefer you to, uh, you know, assume it first. Now we will move forward for ray diagram 2. So the second and the final ray diagram emerges when the object is kept anywhere between infinity and pole because there's no specific points to keep. Now, let's assume it is somewhere over here. Again, it will be above the principal axis. The object will be always above the principal axis, uh, except for the infinity one at least. So, if we draw a uh, rule number one ray diagram, uh, this is parallel to the principal axis, will appear to pass through the focus. What the, and I will not extrapolate it. So, again, we will draw the pole one, and we will get the reflected ray. Now we will extend this anyways. And this is meeting over here. So the object, the image will be this way. So what you can see, the image is between P and F. It is highly diminished, not highly diminished, but diminished. And this is virtual element. So we can see that wherever the object is kept, this image will be formed at focus when it is infinity or between pole and focus. It will go nowhere else. This is standard rule. The image will always toggle between focus and pole. And it will always be diminished. It will always be virtual and erect. So the only one thing that you have to remember for all the ray diagrams is that it is always virtual and erect. The image is always virtual and erect and always smaller than the object. This is standard for convex mirror no matter what the ray diagrams are. Now, real quickly, if you want to chat with me or my academic teacher, you can join my Telegram group, which I have prepared for all my subscribers. The link is in the description box. Please go and check that first. And if you want to build your memory, build your brain of clear academic concepts, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so that you don't miss anything. And also, you can watch any of the videos linked on the screen right now, which you find most relevant. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.